This video shows you how to enter room data using the drawing board window in RHVAC. Here's the Jones residence project that we entered earlier. This project was not in drawing board mode and we entered room data on the room data window. In order to not change the version of the project that was entered in room data window mode, let's make a copy of the project and open the copy. Click the file menu. Click open project. Right click on the Jones Residence project file. Click copy to copy the file to the clipboard. Right click on a blank area in the same folder. Click paste. Now let's rename the copy to Jones Residence DB to indicate that it's the drawing board version of the original project. Click rename. Click Open. Let's change the room data entry mode from room data window mode to drawing board mode. Since we entered a room in the project already, this warning tells us to first make a copy of the project before changing modes, which we've already done. Change to drawing board mode. Click OK. Once again, the program warns us about changing modes since there is already a room in the project. Click Yes. RHVAC has the ability to draw your rooms that were entered in room data window mode on the drawing. The conversion process draws rectangular rooms arranged in rows and creates the first room in the upper left corner of the drawing. Of course, there is still always some adjustment needed after the rooms are created. Let's skip that feature for now and draw our own rooms. Click No. Click the Drawing Board button. The top option of saving the drawing data inside the current project file is fine, so click Continue. For this example, select the template that is 8th scale, 1 8th inch equals 1 foot, the page size is 8.5 by 11 inches, and the orientation is landscape. We could always change all of these characteristics of the drawing later if we want to. Drag a room slash walls object onto the drawing. This object is a simple rectangular room with all external walls, but there are several other room shapes from which to choose near the bottom of the catalog. We are zoomed out a little too far, so let's use the mouse wheel to zoom in a little. When we roll the mouse wheel toward the screen, the drawing zooms in, and specifically zooms in to the point where your mouse pointer is located. In order to pan the drawing, we can press down on the mouse wheel and use it like a button. The mouse pointer turns into a hand icon while the mouse wheel is pressed down. We want this room to be 15 feet by 12 feet, so click one of the eight square white grab handles and drag it until the tooltip says that the room is the size we want. The tooltip says that the room is at the size we want, so we can release the mouse button. Let's add a north arrow object to the drawing. Without a north arrow on the drawing, the program will treat the top of the page as north. That is our situation anyway, but let's add one just so the program doesn't complain about the drawing not having one. The part of the north arrow object with the blue filled in pointer determines where the north direction is for the drawing. The north text does nothing, but we do want to position it near the filled in pointer by dragging the yellow circle grab handle. Some objects, like the room object, have tabs underneath special that divide the properties up into categories. Select the floor category. The floor material intrinsic property specifies the floor to use for the whole room or most of it. The floor object in the catalog is only needed when there is more than one floor material in a room or when there is only one floor and its area is less than that of the room. 
The floor material intrinsic property is blank because the add default floor to new rooms button is in the up position, not pressed down. Let's assign the floor material to one of the default floors. Right click on the room object. Move your mouse over the select from default floors menu item. These are the default floors that have been entered on the default room data window. You can enter up to 40 defaults for each material type. Select the first default floor. We can see that the roof material intrinsic property is blank too. That's because the add default roof to new rooms button is not pressed down. Let's assign one of the default roofs to the room. Right click on the room object. Move your mouse over the Select from Default Roofs item. Select the 16C-19 material from the list. Each wall has been assigned the first default wall material. Let's change it to our second default wall material. Move your mouse over the Set to Default Material item in the pop-up menu. Select the second of our default wall materials. Let's add a window object to the south facing wall. Drag one of the cyan colored grab handles and resize the window to be 5 feet in width. Let's set the glass height property to 6 feet. To quickly enter a dimension input in feet and inches format, type the number of feet, followed by a dash, then the number of inches. If the inches amount is zero, simply type the number of feet, followed by a dash. This window's material has been set to our first default window material. Let's set this window's material to be the second of our default glass materials. Right click the window. Move your mouse over the Set to Default Material item in the menu. Select the second of our two default glass materials. Now let's set the overhang projection and overhang offset properties for the window. When we click an item from this list, both properties will be set. Let's add another window, this time to the west facing wall. After adding the window, go ahead and set its material to the second of our default windows. Add a door to the south facing wall. For windows and doors, you can drag the round yellow grab handle to move the object along its parent wall. You may not move a window or door to another wall though. Manual J says to set the number of people for the building equal to the number of bedrooms plus one. You can put those people in whichever rooms you want. Let's enter two people for this room. Select the stereo item from the list. In order to enter the name of the room, select the Room Name object. The name of the room is Living Room. Type the first few letters until the name is what we want, then press Enter. Before we add another room, let's turn on these two toggle buttons in order to make it so the room will already have a default floor and roof assigned to it. The two buttons are Add Default Floor to New Rooms and Add Default Roof to New Rooms. You can see that the two buttons are now in the press down position, which means that the next new room will have both a floor and a roof already assigned. Drag another room onto the drawing. This room needs to be 14 feet by 10 feet. Let's use a different method to set this room's dimensions. Select the room object. 
In the Object Properties window, select the Standard tab. Now enter a width of 14 feet and a height of 10 feet. The height you enter here is the vertical length of the object on the drawing. It's not the same as the Room Height property that you can enter on the Special tab. Remember that for feet and inches dimensions, we first need to type the feet followed by a dash. Then if the number of inches is greater than zero, enter the inches value. We need to make these two rooms adjacent to each other, so drag the new room to the left a little. The walls of the two rooms need to be positioned so that they are on top of each other like they are here. The wall belonging to the room on the left has a couple of feet that are exterior with the remainder of the wall being interior. So we need to break that wall so we can include the exterior part and exclude the interior part. Right click the wall. Select divide wall here. The wall will then be split into two walls. The point where the break occurs is where the mouse pointer was when you right clicked the wall. Notice that there are shortcuts to these functions. So another way to divide a wall, for example, is to hold the control key down and then double click the wall where you want the break to occur. The cyan colored diamond shaped grab handle shows us where the break occurred. Drag the handle up to the corner of the other room. These interior walls need to have their include wall property set to false. Double click the wall to make it not included. By separating the rooms we can see that the walls belonging to both rooms have been set to not be included. The fill color is gray instead of yellow. Whenever you double click a wall, both that wall and the one underneath it will toggle their include wall property. Add a window to each of the new room's external walls. Now let's add a single French door to the north facing wall of the new room. The hinge of the door is on the wrong side, so let's use the swap hinge side function from the right click pop up menu. Changes like this only affect the appearance of the drawing, not the load calculations. Click Swap Hinge Side. Since this is a French door, we need to set the material property to one of the French door materials. Select the French door category. Select the material from the bottom list. Now we'll type the letter K and the room name Kitchen will be filled in. Press Enter to confirm the name. Thanks for watching.